As a parent, are you looking for an educated kid or a happy one? Because, I mean, not that they're mutually exclusive, but what are you really looking for? And, and, and if, if there's 167 million employed people in the United States today, and I know because I did the research that 77 million of those people do something with their hands, then half the population is out there doing the things we need to do. And because no one's willing to do that anymore, they're making a fortune doing it. Mm -hmm. So why are you just plugging away at pushing your kid through this expensive scenario? Constructing your life is about much more than just building a bank account. Each week, join mindset coach Austin Linney as he interviews guests who are constructing their dream lives and impacting the world around them on a daily basis. If you're an entrepreneur or wanting to start a business, or you just want to hear motivating stories of how others have overcome the odds, you are in the right place. And now for your host, Austin Linney. Guys, welcome back to Construct Your Life. I got the man, Ken Russ, here. How are you doing, sir? Great, Austin. Thanks for having me. It's uh, it's it's a good day today. Let's let's do this. Yes, sir. Well, you wrote a great book called Blue Collar Cash. I loved it. Uh, by the title, you would think that, you know, it's all about the blue collar business. But I found it to be more about life and controlling kind of who you are. But what I found fascinating, and that's why I wanted to save it for the interview. Uh, I sold wine for 20 years, uh, and I traveled to uh, you know France and Napa. Uh, and I would be curious because you, you talked about wine in your book. Um, what I fell in love with to me was that the, 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 what, what people think a winemaker is and what a winemaker actually is is two totally different things. Like the winemaker is just a farmer. You know, they don't really get the glimpse and all that stuff. And when I got to spend some time out in Calistoga with a, with a guy, with a farmer, Man, it was it was one of those experiences. Uh, is that why you fell in love with it too? Was just kind of like the the hard work and the and and there's so much into winemaking too. It it really is uh, symbiotic. Well, you know, for me, obviously the climate's amazing. The towns are beautiful. The restaurant, the I mean, the scenery's it's incredible. But honestly, what what I found really the coolest was the fact that. You know, they talk about how fertile the land is and how, you know, the sea air and the moisture and the soil, and that's all great, but yet the harder the vine has to grow through rock to get to the, to the moisture, the more it has to struggle, the more it ends up being better grapes. So to me, that was the most amazing thing, you know? I, it was just something that I thought, well, that's interesting because you would think, if you have a plant, if you make it struggle, it's not going to produce good fruit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but no. yet, in this case, it's the opposite. Kind of a cool concept. Totally. I met a, a guy from South Africa who's been making wine for, you know, 40 plus years. And he talks about it's just dry as a bone. It's hard. You know, he's like, it, but it's so sweet. And he's like, you don't understand. That's like kind of the juxtaposition of wine. <laughs> yeah. uh, it's just such, a, such an amazing thing. I, I just think it's hilarious. And then my other point was, before we get into the book, was you also love this other thing, which is ridiculously hard, which is golf. Uh, and I was just interviewing a guy earlier, and we were talking about how we're both obsessed with golf, but it's the only sport where you can be buying and selling clubs on the same front nine, yeah. you know? <laughs> I, I find that a lot of entrepreneurs get into golf because it's not, it's not a game that you can ever really master. I think one of the reasons golf is so cool is because everything's your fault, like like my fault. You know what I mean? If I do yeah. something great, it's my fault. If I do something bad, it's you know it's still my fault. I'm not working through a group of other people to get a result. You know, sometimes when you're an entrepreneur, you wanna you wanna touch every end product, and you know you can't do that. Um, you 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 do your best to make something really cool through training and automatic processes and having entrepreneurs surround you and do doing cool things, um, but yeah, it's 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 pretty cool because it's it's one of those things you just can't really master. Um, and you know it, it's interesting because even Jack Nicholas said in his best round he probably hit four shots the, exactly the way he wanted to hit them. And all the other ones were really good misses. So, yeah, it's it's an interesting game, that's for sure. Yeah, sounds like business to me. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that that little Jack Nicholas quote. So, you know, we 
you know, and I think more people are familiar with Mike Rowe, and, and they're, they're more familiar with, you know, the gentleman that's out there trying to get the trades back. But, but I myself, because, you know, we own an HVAC and plumbing and electric company, uh, am, am the driver's seat of it more than most. But, um, you know, when I grew up, you know, we this was not the business. My dad is a dentist, and this is not the business, and you need to go do this and all this thing. Um, and what I find fascinating is that uh, Harvard grads and MBA program guys are trying to buy blue-collar businesses now, and now we kind of have a reversal, right? Uh, I'm not saying they're connecting with the, uh, with the staff, but, uh, but, but it just it cracks me up that these high, high fluent finance guys. And so when, you, when I read a book like yours, um, I really think, in my personal opinion, it's required reading if you want to understand uh, the opportunity, but more importantly, you want to understand your own business. Um, when you started writing this book, kind of what was the what was the what was the genesis that you wanted people to get out of it? Well, first off, kudos for you for 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 realizing that all of a sudden the Harvard guys are buying blue collar businesses. There must be something to that. <laughs> um, it, it, I guess the, the the real impetus was, you know. When I was in high school, there, there, there was shop class, and, and you could almost walk down the hallway and see someone working on a transmission on a Mustang or someone, you know, spinning a leg for a table on a lathe or welding something or wiring an outlet or doing somebody's hair and nails or cooking or whatever. And, and this was the greatest place in the world because you could accidentally discover how cool being a carpenter was or how cool being a welder was or... And, and millions of kids did that. I mean, some people followed their family footprint. Yeah, for sure. But other mm -hmm. people just said, you know what? That's for me. I work with my hands. I learned that way. I want to be a carpenter. And they've gone on to be insanely successful people. Well, some geniuses decide, well, let's take all those machines out of the building and we'll replace those rooms with computers, which is fine. We all had to learn computers. But why was it like one or the other? I mean, why didn't we have both of those things, right? Certainly because they're now all connected. So I, I you know, the, that, that was kind of the first, in my mind, of the, the perfect storm that really started wrecking our, our, you know, people going towards our industry. You know, then you had kids growing up playing on, you know, cell phones and, and trying to play Minecraft where, I used to build tree forts by climbing a tree with lumber on my back and hammer and nails and, you know, do something really constructive, productive outside. And that's just not the same thing as doing something on a tablet, right? So when you combine those two things with the fact that colleges are really good at shaming parents into saying, if you don't come see us, your kid's going to be nothing. Uh, fast food forever for him or her, which is one of the biggest misleading statements, I'll call it that to be nice, that I've heard in a very, very long time. So now you've got all these parents that are like cattle just herding their kids into college because that's the only path to success, which has never been true, like like ever, okay? Mm -hmm. But um, there's no one standing up marketing these other things. So I'm thinking to myself, we've got a crisis on our hands, and unless, unless you know, you know, the, 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 the typical family out there in the United States wants to start paying $1,000 for an outlet and waiting three months for it. We better do something about it. No, and I, and I think that's the hardest thing is that when I first got into this space, I thought it was, I thought it was like, you know, oh, we got to fix the colleges. And then I went, wait, 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 we got to go farther back. We got we, like this is a high school problem. Right. This is a this is an objective problem, but more importantly, it's an objective problem based on a, uh, a, a fictitious argument, <laughs> which means Correct. that that what you do <laughs> signifies what matters in the community instead of just being who you are and enjoying what you do. You know, that, that's absolutely true. They were asking my daughter, what are you going to do for the rest of your life when she was 14 years old? I mean. Really? She's coming home going, Dad, I'm supposed to know what I'm doing for the rest of I, I'm supposed to know what my career is. I'm like, no, you don't. I mean, no, that's no. That's not, you, you be a kid. Yeah. Go out there and discover a bunch of different things and, you know, try a bunch of different things and see see what interests you. I mean, how can you 
And, and, and this is the thing. I mean, these high schools are now getting graded by how many college degrees they produce. I mean, <laughs> seriously, you know, mm. um, and the problem is, is they're dragging parents down with them. You know, I, you know, I remember being at a party a couple of years ago when I was writing the book and I remember hearing, well, there's a group of ladies and they're like, well, you know, my son's going to wherever, Ohio State or my son's going to Michigan or my son's going to Notre Dame. And well, what happened? What happened to her son? Well, he's just going to be a plumber. I'm like, just going to be a plumber. I know that kid. And now he's got six vans. He's making like 300 grand a year. You know what I'm saying? He's living a great life. He's got a brand new truck and a house and a boat. And I mean, he's just loving life. And I think to myself, how sad that they were measuring each other by that piece of paper that hangs on the wall, almost regardless of how happy their kid was. Right. Mm. So Mm. I ended up writing an open letter to parents. It's actually on my website. And I said, listen, I get it. You birthed your child. You're raising your child. You clothed them. You fed them. You know, you're protecting them. You're trying to teach them what you know. And you think the only way to finish that recipe off is for them to have a college degree because then you can be the good parent. It's a complete misleading. It's a lie. Okay, Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and I feel bad because nobody ever rolled up into my driveway and saw all the things that I've accomplished and went, wow, what degree do you have hanging on the wall? That's never happened to me. Mm -hmm. People may ask me, hey, you know, how'd you grind this life out? I'm I'm happy to tell them that. And again, I want you to know I'm not an anti-college guy. I'm really not. I mean, if you're going to operate on my shoulder so I can get back out on the golf course, I want you to know everything there is to know about a knife before you come at me with it, right? I mean, I, mm-hmm. I totally get that. Same goes with a, you know, architect or engineer or teacher or banker, whatever. But this thing about everybody has to have this degree or else, it's just, it's just a, I mean, it's just the wool pull being pulled over all of our eyes, and and they're they're very expensive. <laughs> it's very expensive wool that they're they're selling these days, guys. Let me take a minute to tell you about my buddies over at Lead Hub, Ben and Aaron, the best humans I know. Not only are they amazing at marketing for trade companies, but Ben started his HVAC company in his garage, sold it for multi-million dollars. So when this guy talks, I listen. When we took over Deets Mechanical, we had 22 reviews in 22 years. In seven short months, we went from 22 reviews to 107. We went from a 4.2 to a 4.7. We tripled our Facebook presence and we tripled our calls. If you're an HVAC, plumbing, electric, landscaping company, and you're looking for a no BS approach to marketing, you're looking for people who have done it before, you got to go to leadhub.net. So it's a real life story. So my dad is a one of, of six and he had nothing and then and became one of the best dentists in Texas. Extremely, you know, amazing pr- uh, profession, sold it, all the stuff, right? My whole life, it was the college guy. He was, you got to go to college, you got to do this. Or I don't, I don't like college. I dropped out of college three times, and then I remember, <laughs> <laughs> I remember, I remember, I remember seeing him. It had to have been twelve to fifteen years ago, and we were having a conversation. And he goes, you know what? He goes, I changed my mind. Maybe college isn't that important. And I was like, what? I was like, what? I was like, I was like, I was like, you can't. I was like, you can't. That's mean. I was like, you can't do that now. Here I am. You can't change all this, lanes now. <laughs> all this stress. But 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 what what had happened is he had got in a mastermind, a real estate mastermind with a bunch of other dentists who had kids doing all different stuff. And here I am with a podcast and doing all this stuff. And he's like, wow, your son's like happy. And so, you know, we are all welcome to change our tone. But what and, I, and I'm not I'm really not trying to get on a whole because I rarely get on my soapbox about this stuff. But. You know, we have incentives based in the wrong areas, right? Like you said, how many people are getting a degree? Until we change the incentives, then we won't change America. Because I remember, I remember listening to an interview. Seth Godin was talking about how the education system is basically hasn't changed since 1918 or something like that. Well, if if, if you if you look at If, if, if you look at how people grade happiness, like, like, for example, when I wrote this letter, one of the things I said is, 
As a parent, are you looking for an educated kid or a happy one? Because, I mean, not that they're mutually exclusive, but what are you really looking for? And, and, and if, if there's 167 million employed people in the United States today, and I know because I did the research that 77 million of those people do something with their hands, then half the population is out there doing the things we need to do and because no one's willing to do that anymore, they're making a fortune doing it. Mm -hmm. So why are you just plugging away at pushing your kid through this expensive scenario? Especially when I think construction jobs just started at 30 bucks an hour. Yeah. Okay. So mm -hmm. 30 bucks an hour times, you know, time and a half and the 50 day work or 50 hour, 40 hour, 50 hour work week, whatever. You're talking 75 grand right now. You know, after four years, that's 300,000, right? Well, that's to the plus side of your asset base, right, Austin? I mean, if, if you go to school and spend 50 to 75 a year, that's 200 on the negative side of your asset base. That's like a four or $500,000 swing by the time you're, what, 23? So all I'm saying is at least think about that before you just start shoving all these kids into this program, not knowing what's on the other side. I mean, I would say this. You're in real trouble if you're sending a kid to school without a specific goal at the end. Like, I'm going to medical school, I'm going to be a doctor. I'm going to go to dental, dental school, I'm going to be a dentist. I'm going to go to you know, teaching school, I'm going to be a teacher. Architecture, mm -hmm. I'm going to build buildings. Whatever. If you're just sending someone to school just to go, man, there's a whole lot of better ways to spend your money, especially when all these companies are hiring non-college educated kids and giving them the specific training that they want them to have. Okay? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. People have asked me, well, do you feel bad that you never went to college? I said, well, I missed beer pong. Yeah, I missed hanging out till 2 in the morning. I missed a lot of hangovers, obviously. You know, I missed maybe, you know... All the girl, I don't know. Maybe I missed yeah. that part, right? But my life's really, really good. I've never mm. looked back and said, "Wow, mm. man, you know, I'm really sad that I never got that degree." I, I just never have because ultimately, living well is the goal here. Sure. You know, we don't we don't live to work. We work so that we can live. Well, I'm interested in what your living part is. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that first. Get that mm -hmm. out there, and then there, I'll find you. There's a million different paths that you can use to get there. Yeah, I mean, I went, I lived uh, on somebody's couch for six months at University of Texas, and I didn't pay a dime, and I got the whole college experience. So, you know, there's different ways to kind of do it. And I'll, <laughs> be on, I'll be honest with you, it's a little overrated. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but I, met a, I met a kid. This is a true story. We've been trying to figure out a way to work with him, and, 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 and I, you know, we, we connect from time to time. He's a busy guy. Um, his uncle owned a plumbing company. They had 100 plumbers on staff. He started plumbing when he was 16. This is a true story. Wow. He's 24 now, so the, to be a master plumber in Pittsburgh is no joke. Allegheny County is very hard. Uh, he is a master plumber at – he just became a master plumber last year. In order to own a company in Allegheny County, you have to be a master plumber in order to sponsor other people. He's 24 years old. He's making over 100 and whatever. Uh, he's going to start his own company soon. He's probably going to be making a couple million at 26. Oh, yeah. He's got boats. He's got – Razors. He's got a farm. Like <laughs> right. he's got everything. <laughs> he's right. got a good girlfriend. She right. has a job. Like he's like, I got a farm and I got this property over here. And I'm like, dude, that's crazy. You yeah. Know? And, and granted, his uncle was in the business, and he's very charismatic, and he's good at what he does. He knows what he's doing. But you know, he's 24 years old, and you know that guy's going to be making good money. I I heard somebody say on a podcast the other day, I think it was with Joe, with, uh, Joe Rogan, believe it or not, that if you were an electrician in Austin today starting your own company, mm -hmm. within five years that company would be worth five to ten million bucks. Easy. Just Easy. because of the demand out there. Dude, and oh, by the true way, story. You know, oh, by the way, uh, I think the average age of an electrician is 53 right now, which means most of them are going to be retiring very soon, which means if for, for every maybe 10 of those electricians that are retiring, only three or four are coming online, what's that going to do to supply and demand? It's only going to make it worse, but better for the electrician, right? I just know because I was had a small part, but uh, I just met a guy. 
It happened in November. He sold his company. He started it when he was, I think he started as uncles. He was started his company when he was twenty something. He's forty six now. He just sold his company for seventy million, uh, and he rolled over, you know, a large percentage, and he's probably going to exit with hundred to two hundred million in a couple of years. Yeah, so those are not, not a rough living. Yeah, not, yeah not those rollups ups are really popular right now, especially if you're willing to participate in the next phase or two. I, mm-hmm. I know some people personally that have done that with blue collar um, companies, and they they almost made as much money on the rollovers they did on the initial sale. So 100%. there's some pretty good opportunities out there. Now, and again, now I will tell you, know, you I had to exp- I had to explain to him what a roll up was and and where <laughs> and where the private equity was getting their money. And right. he goes, he goes, he goes, uh, they got a big checkbook. I go, yeah, the biggest. He goes, okay, we're good. <laughs> Time to go. <laughs> yeah, well, it, again, I mean, you know, what did they used to buy? They used to buy all these tech companies and they buy all these other companies. Now they're buying these companies because there's margins in them. And, you know, God bless them. They, they you know, they found a new niche. It's, it's pretty popular right now. That's for sure. So, so you're out there, and I and I've met them because we we hire them, and, and and we're in a smaller town here. You know, where where I get where I get like, I love what your book talks about because I would say ninety percent of what my guys are asking me, we get them the training they need to to learn. Some of them went to technical school, some of them didn't. Doesn't matter. But really, what they're asking me for is like, how do you save money? You know, how do you build a better life? It. We can't. It's not enough just to say, "Hey, go work at your job and and work your way up." Like they're they're more adept now to understanding like how do I save money? How do I invest? So there's like this, uh, for lack of a better word, this holistic approach to to uh, employment now. And if you get on with a good company, you know, three five years down the road, you could be set up with everything you need to to start your own company. And and, and a lot of times those owners would probably champion you to go start your own company, whether it be in another city or something, and maybe they'll invest in you too. Well, t- two things there. No- number one, I've never been afraid to have somebody work with me for a period of time and then go start their own because if they're good enough to do that, then I've definitely benefited from their experiences here. There- there's no question. Um, I will say this. It, you know, What also happens is there are people out there that stay with you for a long period of time and then they think they want to do their own thing and then when the risk comes, you know, to go buy, you know, like I have 40 some vehicles right now. OK, when the yeah. risk goes to start buying vehicles, they're like, huh, I don't know that I want to do that. What, what I do as an owner is I give them the option of being owners here, meaning I treat them like entrepreneurs. I give them their divisions. Okay. I give them their departments and I say, you run that like it's your own company. I mean, the ins and outs, the, you know, the financial, the financials coming and going. I mean, we still keep an eye over the top of the whole thing, but they are literally bosses within companies and they get bonused on, on the, the um, efficiencies of those divisions. So, you know, there's such a thing as an entrepreneur, which is, you know, again, someone like myself who ends up with a lot of risk, but gets a lot of reward. There's no doubt, but there's also entrepreneurs who get almost as much reward without as much risk. But then everyone wins that way because you can drive a company a hell of a lot further than you can with one or two people if you have a bunch of entrepreneurs working in all in, in succession. Okay, so th- that's that's always been a really good uh, a, a really good kind of formula for me. And the thing you have to do though, and most most entrepreneurs or I should say business owners or whatever, their egos prevent them from doing this. You have to let go. Okay, you have to say. You know, instead of banging your chest when you're at home at night saying, hey, I fixed this and I yelled at that and I made this happen and I changed this and I designed this and I built that. You know, if you told me that, I'd be saying, wow, it seems to me like you're too connected to what you're doing. I mean, you know, if 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 you truly want to grow a company, you need to almost make yourself irrelevant to it. And I don't mean like you just go play golf all day. I mean, you you hover above it in a helicopter figuratively at 2,000 feet and look back down at it. And you're not involved in any one particular piece because truly then you can allow people to make awesome decisions, kind of like guide them along and watch the thing grow like crazy. If you're so buried in the fact that you have to do everything, 
then you, your ego is not going to let you get past that. But yet that is truly the secret of growth. No, and I, I, what you just talked about, I mean, I've heard it, but I haven't heard it the way that you put it, you know, have your own business with inside the business. It's so smart because, you know, I don't think that enough people understand the, the risk and, you know, the, the gravity of the situation until it's time. But then you now they have the playbook and they have somebody overseeing and helping them, but they get that freedom, right? They don't really, they don't really want the stress of it. They really just want the freedom. And if you give them the freedom, people will surprise you, right? And I think one of the hardest things that I'm, you know, one of the things I'm in the midst of doing is pulling back, pulling back, pulling back, pulling back, and and kind of letting them go. And 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 you know, there's not a, I don't get a lot of credit. I get all the shit. And, 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 you know, that's kind, of the, that's kind of the game, right? Because that's what cracks me up about being an owner or CEO. They think, they think it's, like, fun. I was like, I spend all my time talking to lawyers and insurance people. It's not really that exciting. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, I, I, th there, is some, there is some romance gap there, isn't there? That's for sure. But, you know, at, at the end of the day, I think, for me, my favorite thing is to drive drivers, meaning I get mm -hmm. to watch these people drive their own lives. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. I get to watch people upgrade their cars and move into new houses and yes. raise kids and you know save money and take them on vacations and, and get the pictures back from that and build savings accounts and, and get to that comfort, peace, and freedom level, which I talk about in the book all the time. That, that to me, is is my job is is to watch other people succeed and, and to help just kind of coax them along whenever they need it and um the best part about that is when they win everybody wins i i've said this so many times in front of all 200 people we have here i can't get what i want for myself or for my company until all of you get what you want first and it's absolutely true because we we work most companies are in a linear fashion there's input there's work there's output, and then there's the you know the sale, okay, or or the the whatever the billing or whatever you want to call it. Well, we are always at the end of that line, okay. We're not in the beginning. I mean, I can't get paid before nothing happens. <laughs> so, mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. I have to make sure that everything happens so that eventually the company works and I work. But that means a lot of people have to work before me, and meaning they have to win before me, and I just love that because. Again, if they're winning, I'm winning. Everybody's happy that way. I love that. So let's talk about the book for a minute uh, for anybody that hasn't read it out there. You know, I could ask you the simple question of like, hey, what's the point of the book? I, I, I get bored by that kind of stuff. What's the aspect of the book when you wrote it and people have given you their feedback that you think people miss the most w when you're talking about the book per se? What, what, when they're reading it and you're, the stuff that you you're like man when I wrote that I wish they would hone in more on this like this point in the book I, it, my, it, it's real simple the fact that you are you are so much more in control of your life than you think you are and that's where the title kind of you know I had an editor at, at HarperCollins I mean huge um, yeah. publisher mm -hmm. um, and they had a lot of working titles and they all decided on blue collar cash because of the crisis of blue collar workers, which is a, it's a great title and it's, it's, it, it, it makes it work. But to your point, what, what people do miss is that anyone, anyone is, I mean, you're in control of your own input, your own output, your own quality of your output, your day or time, your schedule. That's the thing about, about life is, you know, you really decide what the rest of your days are going to look like. I mean, you, you might let other people influence you there, which is a mistake. But I think what people miss about the book is, wow, I, I really have 100% control over tomorrow, the next day, the next day, if, if I think about it in the right way. I mean, again, I, I, don't, I don't live to work. I work so I can live. I'm not going to let life happen to me, okay? I'm going to happen to my life. And mm -hmm. if you put it in those perspectives... You know, you kind of turn around and go, well, you know what? You're right. I mean, he's right. That, that is the way we, we all know what our favorite color is. Nobody else knows that. We all know what our favorite car is, what our favorite house might look like, what our favorite vacations are. Nobody else knows that. It, it could, could I guess what type of pet you would like to own? A dog or a cat? What color? What would you name it? There's no way I could do that, right? Yeah. But yeah. you could. 
And yeah. so why are we allowing all these out, outside influences to control our life when, in fact, we know what works best for us. We know what our nirvana is. We know what our comfort, peace, and freedom is. So why aren't we drawing that out and then going after it one step at a time? I have a good friend. He said something on a podcast similar to this, Van. He said, the problem with negative and positive in, in the world is there's so much positive around us, it's, we become numb to it. Yeah. He said, he said, we're breathing. We've got comfort. We've got rooms. You know, and we're all, nobody's, everybody's trying to be a millionaire now. And he's like, if you just like, take the day for what it is, I got family. I get to work. I get to, I get to earn. Like, you know, now more than ever, you can have multiple jobs. It's, it's what you're saying. It's so important to me. It's like there's nothing outside of you that you don't need already. You just got to open up to it. Well, and, and what's interesting there is, is I always get to the next step of those things, you know, mm -hmm. like when you say, you know, when you, your friend said uh, something about, well, you, you know, just working and move on up. Well, can you define like draw, move on up? What, what does that mean? OK, yep. mm -hmm. what that means is you're accepting higher responsibility, more position, more pay mm -hmm. and therefore more opportunities, which should provide you more freedom. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. when someone says I want to be a millionaire, I would say, why? For what? <laughs> well, because I want to have money. Money for what? For what? For well, what? I want to buy a fishing boat, or I want to take my family on vacation, or I want to buy a cabin, or I want to, I want to have, I want to swim in the money on my bed and just like relish in the fact that I'm <laughs> stress free. Well, well, fine, but that's that's the true thing. You know, we're, we're not all going to chase McMansions and 15 cars and mega yachts and maybe rap star career. We're, that's influencer we're not all going to do that mm -hmm. but we all know exactly if we sat down and just thought about it we all know what the perfect life for us could be man if i could live like that that would be really cool so get that in front of you use the fact that your brain has that reticular activating system use the fact that your brain has the attraction mode the, the firing of the neurons that create pictures in your mind, that create actions in your body to go get the things that it sees most. Like, use the power of vision in your brain. It's given to you. It's there. It's a program. Start hitting that program. Use that because nobody does. No one teaches you how to do it. And yet it's free. And the power of vision is, is more powerful than anything you're going to do in your lifetime moving towards what you event, want your eventuality to look like. So for me, it's all about, man, I, I want to use, I want, I want to see what I want, have it in front of me and then draw me to it almost involuntarily because mm -hmm. the anticipation of all those types of things is in my opinion, the only way to live. And I think what's important, right? Cause I'm, I'm sitting here and I'm 41 now and I'm like, man, if I could be 20 or 18 and go back and work for Ken, man, that would be cool. <laughs> Uh, because because you're going to demand more of me than I could even envision of myself to start out. And I appreciate being around people like that, 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 that you know, my, one of my favorite quotes is, you know, as a leader, you got to have a vision big enough for everybody to fit inside of it. Right. Uh, and when I meet uh, entrepreneurs or business owners such as yourself, you know, I can already tell you word for word. Uh, not the exact word, but word for word, what the morning meetings sound like. Uh, you know, I, I know that. I've, I've seen what excellence looks like. And I think that we have gotten away from excellence. We, we've settled for good. And now my obsession is what's great, right? And, and, and when you ask standards out of somebody else, some of those questions are difficult because I got asked them a couple weeks ago at a conference. And you... When you, when you meet somebody that demands that, that proper question and you ask it of yourself, they ask it of you, you know, you really elevate your entire life. And, and, I, and I think that's why it's so important what your book means and what you're doing as your own company and all the 200 employees you have um, is such something to inspire to be uh, moving in that direction as a company uh, and, just, well, and just hold people to a higher standard. You're 100% you're right, and thank you for that. You're, you're right. If you worked here, you'd have to be chasing something, and then you were, when you caught it, you'd have to start chasing something else, and when you caught that, you'd have to start chasing something else. I mean, that, that's just how yeah. it works, right? Um, but, but yeah, I, I, I think of it this way. So you're, you're hiring a person. That's a human being, okay? 
Mm-hmm. Why would you only want one third of that person? Meaning there's three eight hour periods in a, in a day, right? There's the working eight hours, the sleeping eight hours, and the rest of the eight hours. Why wouldn't you want to know what that other eight hours looks like? Because wouldn't you, wouldn't you rather hire the whole person rather than just one third of them? And if they're going to wander around your, your building in your hallways, yeah, I mean, if they're doing a mechanical thing, great. Yeah, you're going to get that eight hours out of them. But wouldn't you rather know, like, hey, when you get home tonight, like, what are you going to do? Like, what what is your life like? What's your hobbies mm-hmm. like? What's your spiritual moment look like? What's your give back moment look like? What's your health moments look like? You know, what's your financial moment? I mean, as much as you're willing to share with me, I want to know so I can pump that up, okay? I mm-hmm. would rather you be as successful with the second third of your life, of your day, than the first third, which is working with for me. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I, I want you to work for yourself first and me second. I want you to work for yourself first and for the company second. I want you to work for your own success first, which resides in that second set of eight hours, and then the company second. Because if you're getting what you want for yourself, I'm going to win automatically, hands down, every time. So I just think that we, you know, we get the standard interview questions. Okay, well, you have to be here at 6:30, and you got to wear this interview, and or this, you got to wear this uniform, and you know, you have to perform this task, and we're going to pay you this money, and here's your days off, and here's your sick time, and here's your, I mean, it's just so, so stupidly mechanical. Yeah. I want to know the rest. Of, I want to know the story about the rest of you. Yeah. Because if you and I can push that, now we're on to something. Totally. Well, it's 411, and I already saw on our service titan earlier, uh, a couple of my guys caught some calls early because I know where they're going to be in 20 minutes watching the Steelers because they can't help it. But uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, saw them, I saw them move up a call. I'm like, right. I know exactly where you're going to be. You know, oh, but yeah. no, you're, you're 100%. Look, w- when, when they come in, and they want to bring a personal problem to you, that's when I know we're doing the right thing. Yeah. And and, and, that's to, and I know that sounds – because they're going to go do their job. I, my guys work. I'm not worried about the work part. Right. It's, hey, whoa, is something else going on that you want to talk about? That's the question they never get asked. And when yeah. they ask that, that takes it to the next level. Yeah, and, and, I, and the interesting thing is you get some of these – owners that can be turned off in the interview sometimes because the guy who just drove past 20 help wanted signs to get to your front door, right? He's going to stop and say hi to you for a while. He had three interviews before you that you don't know about, and he's got three more after you Mm -hmm. that you don't know about. So when he's sitting in your chair and he's looking at you right now and he's going, hey, man, what's in it for me to work here? Okay. When did that question ever happen? I mean, 25, 30 years ago, if you asked that question, you'd be kicked out on your, you know what, right? But now, you know, most, most owners will go, well, how dare you ask me that question? How dare you come to me with that attitude? But I'm, I, I look at it completely different. I'm looking at it like, hey, man, I know what you're up to. And, and if, I, if I can answer that question in a way that makes you feel good about it, mm-hmm. then we're both going to win here. Probably okay? So. If I can answer the question, what's in it for you to work here? And you go, all right, I think I'll, I think I'll work here. I think that's good. I won, and we're going to win together, okay? Mm-hmm. And so you just can't be afraid of that type of new attitude because it wasn't around 15, mm-hmm. 20, 25 years ago. But it is now, and it's, it's, I think it's here to stay for, you know, for, the, for the future because, again, less and less and less people are willing to work with these two things I'm pointing to my hands now. And um, that's only going to bode well for the people who are willing to do that. Thousand percent. So, if people want to find the book, how would they track that down, sir? They would go to kenrusk.com, and they could. There's a bunch of buy buttons there, but you can always go to the usual suspects. You know, Amazon, iBooks, Barnes and Nobles, all those kinds of places. Independent bookstores. Don't forget to support those as well. And. Um, one of the cool things I did is I was, um, you know, so many times people read books, they, they're self-help books, but they become, I heard this the other day, I thought it was cute. 
they become shelf help books because nothing ever gets done with them, right? So I stole that. But <laughs> so I, I made a course now that it's, it's eight sessions, and it's only 45 minutes a session, and it's all on visualization. It's all on your ability to see what you want your life to look like. It gives you the keys, literally unlock your own future, nobody else's, right? Mm -hmm. So it's 179 bucks. You get a free $25 book with it, and then I donate most of that money to charity anyway because I, I have a foundation that helps veterans, and so we, we do a lot of charity work here, which is really mm -hmm. cool. But, you know, for, for not much money, you can change your life this afternoon starting right now, okay? Mm -hmm. An hour from now, you could say, wow, I'm thinking differently about who I am already. And um, it, it's, it's just something that I put out there. So if, if, you, if, you, if you go ahead and get involved in that, I tend to take that money and give it to a, someone in the inner city or whoever who's, who's struggling who would love to get some information for free. Um, and uh, it's just kind of my way of giving back after, you know, because it's incumbent upon guys like you and me to shorten the learning curve for entrepreneurs that are following up behind us. That, that's mm -hmm. the way I look at it. So this is my way of doing that. thousand percent. Guys, make sure you go grab that book and that course. Trust me, you won't be disappointed. Share it with a friend, send it around, and we'll see you next time. <clears throat>